In this video, we are going to consider this simple circuit to verify Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current law with LT spice. The first thing to do is considering the sign convention. If you look at R1, both positive and negative terminals are specified. So, following the passive sign convention, the direction of current are chosen such that the current enters the component from the positive label terminal and leaves from the negative label terminal. By putting the cursor on each component, we can specify the current direction. Now it is not showing. We need to determine the simulation first. Let us perform transient simulation. Enter 5 milliseconds for stop time. Click OK. Now if you put the cursor here, the current flow from the right to left. And it is opposite to our convention. So we should rotate the resistor. Click on move icon. Then select the resistor. Hold down Ctrl K on your computer and press R two times. Now if we check it, the current going according to our convention, left to right. Similarly, you can fix the convention for other components as well. Now we have done with the passive sign convention. Okay, let us look at the manual solution and then compare it with the LT spice simulation results. First, Ohm's law is used to determine the voltage across R1 and R2. That V1 equal to R1 I1. R1 is 10 Ohm, so become 10 I1. And V2 is equal to R2 I2. R2 is 50 ohm, then it becomes 50 I2. Then applying Kirchhoff's current law. I1 minus I2 plus I equal to 0. The negative sign for I2 is because it leaves node A and I1 I entering the node A. And from the Kirchhoff's current law, we know that the sum of currents that entering a junction is equal to the sum of current that leave the junction. Here I is equal to 6 ampere, so if we put the noun values in the right side, I1 minus I2 become minus 6. Name it equation 1. Then applying Kirchhoff's voltage law KVL at this loop. This law tells us that the sum of all voltages or potential differences in an electrical circuit loop is equal to zero. So V1 plus V2 minus E equal to zero. You know that why there is a negative sign. It is because the sign is opposite to the direction of our loop. If you look at V1 and V2, the direction of our loop is from positive to negative, but for the voltage source it is from the negative to positive. Again taking the noun values in the right side, so V1 plus V2 become 120. From the Ohm's law we have V1 and V2 in terms of I1 and I2, so it becomes 10 I1 plus 50 I2 equal to 120. Name it as equation 2. Now we have two equations, 1 and 2. So we can find these two unknowns, which I1 become minus 3 ampere and I2 become 3 ampere. If you put the values of I1 and I2 in this equation, we can also find V1 and V2 which V1 equal to minus 30 volt and V2 equal to 150 volt. Now let's calculate the values in LT spice 
and see the results. Go to the edit simulation command, select DC operating pine, click OK, and run the circuit. A new window as operating pine is appearing. V of N001, which is V1, is equal to 120 volt. V of A node is equal to 150 volt. And V of N002 is the voltage across the current source equal to 270 volt. And the current source I of I1 is 6 ampere. Current through R2 is 3 ampere. Uh, current through R3 is equal to the current source, which is 6 ampere. Current across R1 is minus 3 ampere. And current through our voltage source is equal to 3 ampere, uh, which is opposite to the current across R1. The values that are obtained with LT spice are the same with the values that we obtain manually. So uh, we got the same results. The one thing that is missing here is voltage across R1. With DC operating point, we cannot get voltage across the component. We only get the node voltage or a single ended voltage as you can see here these are all the nodes voltage to measure voltage across r1 take the voltage differences between the two terminals of r1 the right terminal is v1 and the left one is v of a uh, which is 150 volt and the voltage difference between these two terminals is the voltage drop across R1. 120 minus 150 equal to minus 30 volt. Or you can multiply this 10 ohm by I of R1, uh, which is minus 3 ampere. And we again get the same result minus 30 volt. And the voltage across R2 is the same as the voltage at node A because the lower terminal is grounded and the voltage at this node is zero. So ground becomes the second default terminals. The other way to measure current or voltage of each component is applying transient simulation. Let us run our circuit. If you want to measure voltage at node A, put your cursor on it and click it. Now you can see the voltage at this node. To measure voltage drop across R1, put your cursor here, hold the lift key of your mouse and then place the other one here. Now you can see the voltage drop across R1. Let us delete this one and take the measurement once again. Now you can clearly see 30 volt, the voltage drop across R1. Similarly, you can do that for R3, which is 120 volt. The voltage across R2 is equal to the voltage at node A because the next terminal of R2 is connected to ground. The voltage at node A is a single ended voltage. It means that whenever we get only one terminal, then the major voltage is always with respect to ground. So ground becomes the second default terminals. Now let us measure the current. If I bring the cursor through the component, it will show me this current probe symbol. If I click it, I will see current flow through R1. Similarly, you can do for the other components. So all the values that we already found are 
similar with values that we obtain in LTSpice. If you have a large circuits that may require lots of calculation, so you can check your work with LTSpice. That is all for this video. If you like it, please don't forget to subscribe.